Well, good morning, everyone who is online. And for those few who are here to help us with the worship service today, this is Faith Lutheran Church in Sugarland. My name is Jeff Wirtz. I'm the pastor here along with Pastor Ken. And uh, it's great that you're with us this morning. It's crazy. We don't have live worship today, so to speak. It's uh, only online. And uh, our first hymn is really appropriate, just as I am without one plea, because the whole COVID thing is out of our control. So we just give it to God and uh, we join together for worship. So if you would join us right now as we sing together our opening hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Before we confess this morning, you know, I think it's so important. We're in a world today where everybody's pointing the fingers at everybody else. And yet the reality is, is we're all broken and we all fail. And so this morning, rather than thinking about what other people have done, let's examine ourselves because our help is in the name of the Lord who, who made, made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you, and you forgave, forgave the iniquity, iniquity of, of my sin. sin. Let's take a moment as we prepare to confess our sins, just silently with, our, with God alone. Our 
O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I have poor, miserable, miserable sinner, sinner confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, iniquities with, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, Jesus Christ himself, announce the grace of God to you. As you have confessed your sins, they have been forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. be to God on high. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world, and that the life's end grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
we continue with our scripture readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading is from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. When, then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own, own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will, will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. The Holy Gospel reading is from John. If you'll please stand. Uh. So, Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. What do you say? Now, they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus went down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman while standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. This is, this is the word for our reflection. Oh boy. Thanks be to God. Praise be to you, oh Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, may we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe one God, in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who, who for us men and for our, our salvation, salvation came down, came down from, from heaven, heaven 
was, and was incarnate, incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary and was made, made man and, and was, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered and, and was buried. buried. On the, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended, ascended into heaven and sits, and sits at the right hand of the God. Father. And, and he will come, come again, again with glory to, to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, 
Four weeks ago, Pastor spoke about would we be willing to pray that the Lord would show us the kind of walls that have been torn down in our culture? And then uh, the next week, could we pray that the Lord would show us uh, walls that uh, may be in our own lives, ones that we might have even built as a uh, protection towards what's going on around us? Uh, and would be willing to let him, and only he can do that, take those uh, bricks out of our wall. Then uh, two Sundays ago, uh, we started talking about the change process. And uh, in, in that change process, it ended with hope. And one of the members made a comment to me during the week. It says, you kind of got the hope and you just dropped it there. <laughs> I read this serenity prayer. Do you remember that? And in, in a way, I was intentional about that because in a way, hope is the end result of getting everything off that interferes with you being confident who God is. And the step just right before that was that issue of acceptance. And if you have worked through the other things and you come to a place where you know God loves you where you are, as you are, and you can't change his love at all, if you get that acceptance, then hope follows. But, th but the difficult time before that was when we had to deal with that whole issue of resentment. And in, and in a way, the message this morning is going to be about that, the processing of forgiveness. Uh, ahead of the thing that kind of pushes it up over the nosebleed section is angers that happen. And those happen just because we experienced some kind of change, some kind of caught us off guard, wasn't what we planned, wasn't what we wanted, but we went through that process then as well. And so when, when we are able to grieve, work through shock, anger, resentment, acceptance, hope, then hope is restored. You don't even have to try to hope. When you deal with everything God wants you to deal with to get out of the way, then everything that you, everything you do, it leads you towards... Think about what Paul says in uh, Romans 5 where he talked about, we, we therefore re rejoice on our tribulation. You say, what? Yeah. So Paul was saying, we rejoice on our tribulation because tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces proven character. And proven character does not, it leads us to hope. And hope does not disappoint us because his love is poured out in our hearts. So when we receive the forgiving love of God, not just for ourselves, but for somebody else, and we accept the situation, not that we like it or that we agree with it, but that we're okay because we're his. As pastor says, if you don't know grace, then you're toast. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a, a little trip with you this morning. I historically do not like steps. <laughs> it's like somebody else figures something else and go, do, 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 you know, just do that, and it's kind of like a magical formula, and that's not what this is about. But I have learned over time, working with lots of people, that walking through the process of forgiveness gets real sticky because it's not just a choice to forgive. It's processing what happened to you. And if you don't have a little bit of help doing that, our whole culture is not going to help you. You're not going to get wisdom from uh, thinking around you. This is, again, I said, you know, three weeks ago and four weeks ago, the walls in our culture or in our society, whatever that may be, this is about, uh, about dealing with them. And so number one, and if it, you got your bulletin handy, oh, by the way, for those viewing online, I did, everybody got my email list, I emailed a copy to you. Uh, so if you want to fill in the blanks and you can do two things at one time, you can go get that. Number one, you got to admit you took a hip, hit. By the way, Every one of us has probably heard someone say, or we've said ourselves, we've, we may have said ourselves, you know, I, I, I probably had it coming. Have you ever heard somebody say that? They were treated badly by somebody who said, well, you know, I kind of had it coming. No, no excuses. Have you ever heard this? How about this one? I'm sure some of you have said this. Well, I know they really love me. Uh -uh. Because there's no good reason for a bad deed. Don't ever excuse hurtful behavior to you because you think you deserved it or because they really were loving. Because if it's bad, it's bad. And dealing with forgiveness starts with admitting what is. I've told 
hundreds of people in my office, I will never help you blame a parent, but I'll do everything I can to help you realize that what they did to you was not what God wanted them to do. When it says, parents, raise your children. Don't exasperate them. And that's kind of a mild word because some of the things that happened with our parents, it was more than exasperation. Don't excuse it. That, 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 that will not help you because it, it stops the process that you need to walk through. Because whether you've been sinned against or not, now sometimes things happen and we get, they get stuck on us and it may not be a person, and it may not just, this is why this gets a little bit messy sometimes because we tend to think of forgiveness as a person. Let's think of it today as just letting go. And sometimes what we need to let go of are it's not somebody, something around us that was intentional. But we still need to let it go. So I'm going to include that in here. Now, I'm going to ask you just to kind of mentally take your pulse. Because some of us, if we just, I, there was t several times early this morning I was awake laying in bed and just kind of wakefully praying. And, and all of a sudden I'd realize that I was kind of doing this number, you know what I'm saying, where this is where I get it, my shoulder muscles that kind of go like this, then I realize what I'm thinking about, praying about, and I'll just choose to say, okay, Lord, what is this, and choose to submit to him whatever it is that's on my shoulders. Now, this is going to be the difficult part. We're going to spend more of our time on this today than other things. You need to separate the deed from the doer. You need to separate who did it from what they did. Because if you don't separate the deed from the doer, you've got a dilemma. Either you've got to reject the doer or you've got to embrace the deed. So can you say this with me? Separate the deed from the doer. I didn't hear that. Separate the deed from the doer. And you online, I hope you're also doing the same thing. We need to admit, that, we need to say this out loud. We need to, need to declare this into the light. What I really need to do is to separate the deed from the doer. And in order to do that, we need to sometimes be aware of the outside triggers of what we're feeling. You remember last time we talked about halt, hang, hungry, angry, lonely, and tired? Those are times we need to be a little bit on guard so that we don't take on something, don't take up an offense. We need to guard our own hearts uh, at that time. But there are times where, where when, when, we have, uh, when we've taken something on, uh, it's not surprising that we would do that. It's not surprising that we would react because Adam had a new default setting in the garden in perfection he never blamed anyone didn't need to there's no sin there's no separation but as as soon as it happened what did adam say first of all he covered himself right he hid and then well the woman and the woman said well the snake we need to understand that as long as we have a breath there will be an old default setting that will crop up and want us to, it won't actually tempt us to shift the burden. Shift the burden. I'm hurt. Well, I think the woman did it. Well, I'm, I'm angry. I, it's, you know, it's the political party. It's whatever it is. That's, that's called shifting the burden. Instead of me taking responsibility and believing that God is with me in the middle of my dilemma and trusting his grace to be with me, to accept me, to love me, and help me walk this thing through, when I shift the burden, I'm looking outside of myself, and there will be no solution outside of myself. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'll be perfectly right all the time. I can always point to something that somebody else did. That's not the issue. The issue is, am I going to be able to let it go? Am I going to be able to forgive? And so all the effort of shifting the burden outside keeps me locked up inside. And that's not a healthy place to be. Okay, I want you to say with me, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. God loves a sinner but hates his sin. Now, if I don't know that, I'm in trouble. Because if I think God doesn't love me because I'm sinned, I'm stuck. Either I've got to try to be perfect, which will never work, 
or I'll live under condemnation. Paul says, no, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This issue of being forgiven and forgiving is all hooked up together. And so, how to use a mirror? I have a little mirror right here, okay? I'm going to just uh, ask Pastor to shine on me. And uh, let's see. Can I get you, Paul? How about Kyle, Trista, Karen? Yep. That is not the right way to use a mirror. When God puts his light, think what it says in uh, 1 John 1, 5. God's light. You can't, you can't, get, a, you can't get a shadow side of him. He's, he's always going to be light. That's who he is. And when he, we move towards his presence, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's what John says right there. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So what I really need is when the light of his presence shines on me, I need to look at the light that he is and own what he's showing me. This is the mirror that I asked you to get this last week when we we're talking about resentment. Am I willing to look at my side of it? Am I looking at, at my heart? My, am, I, am I just, er, yet? And if I can't get past, if I don't ever look at myself, I won't get past it. Some years ago, I, I've never forgotten this, I had a uh, couple in my office. I'd been working with him, working with her, and Liz and I were meeting with this couple, and uh, at one point, they came in, sat down, and somebody said something. The other one said something else, and pretty soon they were arguing on the couch. <laughs> and I was just fiercely taking notes on my pad. And uh, when they kind of calmed down, they looked at me, and they apologized for having an argument in front of me. And I said, no, that's all right. And then I started talking with him about the things that was jerking his chain. I said, does that sound familiar? Because it was all his past. And then I turned to her and I said, does this sound familiar? And it was all her past. And I had a picture sitting there. It wasn't hung. It was just a big picture. I picked it up and I put it between them on the couch. I said, you know, you think this is a window. From now on, this is a mirror. What you see that you're really reacting to, your reaction is about you. I'm not discounting what they did. That's not the issue. But your resentment, your reaction of them is why you're stuck. Forgiveness is an amazing thing. It's a gift you give to yourself. When we're able to forgive, it's a gift to us. And so, how to use a mirror. Now, if I can't separate, if I can't separate the deed from the doer, I'm going, I'm going to be, I'm going to have difficulty comprehending God's love for me. If I can't separate the deed from the doer, that's not just about somebody else. That's about me. Because if I think what I, I am what I did, how many times have you heard some adult just made you shrink saying to a little kid, you know, you are fill in the blank. When we said that, what we're saying was your behavior defines who you are. No. You know what? There's something amazingly greater about me than even my best behavior. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I mean, that's up here. That's, Paul talks in Ephesians 4 about the measure, the stature of Jesus Christ. I, 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 and we, we all need to know who we are. Now, if, if I'm blaming, I cannot forgive and I cannot receive forgiveness. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 5, or 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer and he says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And then when he finished this prayer, then he says, because I tell you, if you, don't for, if you forgive your brother, I'll forgive you. If you don't, then I won't forgive. It's not that God doesn't want to forgive us. He does. But he knows how we're built. He knows that old default setting of Adam. And he knows that if we're not willing to let go, then something in us stops his restoring us to relationship with him. We don't let him remove the obstacles in the way of coming home freely, facing the light, appreciating the light, enjoying the light of his presence. We'll get stuck there. And so, number three, you know, if, if you admit what happened and you can separate the deed from the doer, at some point, you got to rage at the deed. 
Jesus experienced times of anger at what was done, not at the people. He spoke to people, but he was angry. God's angry at anything that separates me from his grace and his love. That's what he does. He hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And so if I look at the sin, it is okay. It is necessary. It's healthy to say, man, that hurt. And to all the way up to rage, admitting it is a start, separate indeed from the doer next. But then we've got to come to a place where we can actually fully process, you know, that was really low. That was hurtful. I needed something, I didn't get it, or I got something and I didn't need, whatever that may be. And so that's why it's kind of a messy time. We shouldn't be too surprised that a lot of stuff comes up. And this is what happens. If I haven't been practicing this, I'm stuffing stuff away in my pockets. I'm stuffing something else away in my pockets. And at some point, God picks me up by my heels and turns me upside down. Everything starts falling out of my pocket. That's this. And so I put up here righteous anger for one reason. I think I came close to experiencing that one time in my life. <laughs> I, say, I say that because there was a time where we had to bring correction to a man, and he had done something really, really wrong. And in the process of bringing correction, he began to explain to us why we were wrong at confronting him. I felt this anger rise up inside of me. Now, when it says, be angry and yet don't sin, don't let the sun go down your anger, it wasn't too long later when I began to think, that jerk, because he, he, quote, he was, excuse me, his behavior was. Sometime, several years actually later, I got a phone call from this guy. I thought, ah, he had left a message. He wanted to go out to lunch. I thought, you know, I can hear myself saying, I don't think I want to go to lunch with that jerk. What was I doing? Identifying the deed with the doer, right? Went out to lunch. It was a fabulous time. He had come to a place where God had brought him to a recognition of what he had done and how he had wronged another person here in doing that and was making amends. I was so grateful, and I had to walk back through my own attitude that in the beginning, even righteous anger can turn south if you don't pay attention to what's going on inside of you. And so at some point, number four, we really need to offer both the deed and the doer to the Lord. We got to let go of both of them. Uh, there's a, there's a uh, verse I remember in, in the liturgy some years ago as a boy, we'd sing this. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. I don't know if you remember that or ever sang that part of the liturgy. But this is the picture. You come home at night and you get all through with everything else. You kind of reflect. You get kind of quiet at night. And, and then you start thinking back over the day. And you say, Lord, you know, you did some amazing things today, and I thank you for that. And I, I had a chance to be a, an instrument of that, thank and give him both, what he did and what he did through you. And Lord, there were some things that I did that I, I really messed up, and I am so sorry for those things. Would you forgive me and offer them up? Well, same thing with people. At some point, we need to offer up what they did and the person and say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm not Lord, you are, and I give these people over to you. I, I ask that you deal with them graciously. Could you deal graciously with me? You love me, you hate my sin. So I, I ask Lord, you do the same thing for them, that you'd show them you love them and that you really would forgive them. And then we can say, I love you. Now, saying I love you, I don't mean, I love you. I don't mean saying it with words, I mean, this phrase, and I just want to walk it through with you. I give up the right to pay, expect you to pay me back for what you've done to me. I give, the, I give up the right to expect you to pay me back for what you've done to me. Now, if you don't like that, let me ask you a question. How do you think God forgives you? Do you think God says, Ken, I give up the right to expect you ever to pay me back for what you've done to me? I think that's what God says to me, right? 
Do you think so? This is yes, this is yes. This is what God says to me. He says, Ken, I give up the... That's why I went to the cross. That's why I carried everything. That's why it says he would tempt in every respect as we are. He became sin, became my sin. Because he said, I'm going to give up the right. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to give up the right ever to expect you to pay me back for what you did to me. Now, this is, this is a declaration of love, but this, these are the words of forgiveness. But can you see, if you haven't processed the grief, you can try to state this, and what? What's going to happen? It's going to get stuck in your throat. Because I realize, to be able to, number six, to be able to pray, Lord, I ask that you'd bless them more than you bless me. This is kind of the test. Have you made it through, and have you really turned loose, Right? Have you, have you been able to let go and let God do the things that only he can do and receive from him? It's, Lord, I ask that you bless them more than you bless me. Now, what happens if you can't? What happens if you honestly can't without gritting your teeth say, Lord, I ask that you bless them more than you bless me? Well, go back to number one. <laughs> go back to the beginning. Admit you took a hit, right? Separate the deed from the doer. Rage at the deed. Give them both to God. And then say, I love you. And then pray again. Lord, I ask that you'd bless them more than you bless me. And it's my, it's my prayer that, as, as it says, the wise man built his house on the rock. And I've said this before, but I have a picture of my, I had a picture of my office that's now in the box. But it was a picture of this, uh, like, lake or ocean, maybe. And here was some sand down here, and somebody built a little sandcastle, and the waves were kind of eroding it away. And up here on this rock was this beautiful house on this cliff on the rock. And it quoted that scripture. Wise man built his house on the rock. And that's a picture. I know I had that in a Sunday school leaflet when I was about this high. And my mom saved those for me over the year. I can, I can almost picture that picture. The wise man built his house on the rock. I thought, well, that's smart. And the guy on the bank, well, that wasn't very smart. But the truth is, the lots were side by side. But the wise man built his house on the rock. And all the sand and all the rubble, that's accumulative in us. And so walking through this process of forgiveness, God will give us continual times to practice separating the deed from the doer so that we can practice believing that God loves me and hates my sin. Because if we can't practice it with ourselves, we won't with others. If we don't do it with others, we probably won't do it with ourselves. And things just accumulate. We've got a whole basement full of stinky stuff. But when we can begin to walk through it, then we can come to a place of freedom that God wants for us. And so, in conclusion, any resentment is a gold mine. You may need to have somebody walk you through it. You may need to pray with somebody. Remember what we talked about several weeks, this last two weeks? Find a safe person. Find a safe person, somebody who is going to help you keep your eye on the grace of God that he loves you even though he hates your sin. He loves the person that you're angry at even though he hates their sin more than you do. You just don't know how much God hates sin. But he does. Father, I ask that you would show us in your grace and your mercy that we are your people, that you love us, and there's nothing we can do to change that. Let our hearts hear that. We pray it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was, that was awesome, wasn't it? That's one you just want to hold on to, because guess what? We'll all revisit that many times over in our lives. Hey, we're going to do something new today. We're going to do uh, what we call praise reports. And uh, Kyle, who's our congregational president, has the first one, so he's going to come on, come on up. I'm going to ask you to speak at the uh, podium for that, and then uh, we're going to bring Mike Lyons up for a second one. So, Kyle, if you'd come on up and share. Uh, that praise report for our congregation. Yes. Good morning, church. Wow. Sorry about that. 
Okay, praise report from the leadership team has to do with uh, some of what we're going through with the coronavirus and government relief that was offered for that. Uh, we signed up for a loan called the PPP loan, okay? Um, Trista Jones filled out all the paperwork and applied for the loan in time to get it. Uh, not a lot of churches and individuals were able to get this loan. Uh, the money went pretty quick. Uh, we were blessed and we were able to get uh, a PPP loan for a total of $37,000. And the loan came with stipulations. Uh, one of the stipulations was the money had to be used within eight weeks of receipt. Uh, the money could be used for payroll and we used it for payroll for our staff. The money could also be used for uh, utilities. It was also a qualified expense and we were able to use some of it also to service the interest that we're paying on the loan for the gym. So uh, we've exhausted the funds and the time limit permitted um, and this loan for uh, nonprofits and others uh, there's an opportunity for it to be completely forgiven. In other words we won't have to pay it back. Um, our staff, uh, Trista, has kept track of uh, where all the money was used and the application for forgiveness will be available uh, on the bank website this month. Uh, as soon as that's available, she will process that and we have no reason to expect that we're not going to receive uh, complete forgiveness for the loan. So. Uh, say a prayer and a thanks to God for $37 to help keep us up and running and to keep our staff paid and our note serviced. Fabulous. That is, that is a big praise report. We're so thankful to God for that. $37,000 and um, we'll, we'll talk about that more as we pray for the offerings and uh, so forth in a minute. Uh, Mike, come on up. Everybody say uh, good morning, Mike. You can take your, thank you. Yes, sir. Being COVID safe. So you have, uh, you had a little accident a little while back. Well, I got two things to talk about. One of them, yeah, about a month ago, I was involved in an automobile collision and I was traveling at high speed on the freeway. Somebody hit me from behind, sent my truck into a spin and I wound up into the wall. And my <laughs> thumbs, while they were on the steering wheel, they both got hyperextended. Uh, I went to the doctor for uh, well, every other day for four weeks and the right thumb was better but the left thumb just wasn't getting any better and I would mentioned it to Pastor Wirtz and he says well why don't we pray for it. I said hey I'm always for prayer so we prayed for it. Within the next few minutes my thumb began to work, all the pain went away, it's completely healed and I've never experienced something that was that fast before. So I turned to Pastor Wirtz and I said, well, there's another problem that I've been having for about six or seven years. You see, I can't take high temperatures very well. When it gets above 75 degrees, I start to get sick. It's above 85, I just shut down. And it, if I'm outside and it's 95 degrees, I'll just start throwing up. So he'd never prayed for anybody with that before and he started praying with me and I couldn't feel any difference. I didn't notice any difference. Um, we prayed for a few minutes on it. And then I, I got this kind of message that says, to whom much is given, much is expected. And my thought was, well, I wonder how much is expected. Let me go out and find out. So I grabbed the hedge trimmer and for the next few hours at 95 degrees, I trimmed all the hedges around the admin building with no ill effect. Yeah, I sweated, but I wasn't sick. The instant healing was just astounding. And I know to expect healing of God. It's just the degree and the speed which he put it upon me to this day has me quite shocked. I just wanted to bring that to you. Thank you very much for listening. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. A lot of people are skeptical that God still heals today, but he does. And the great thing about God is we don't dictate to him when or how or why, but he is very gracious. And, and then when you know that it just cements into our hearts how real God is. 
And the message on forgiveness becomes that much more powerful because we know that if God can do this tangibly, then God can also do that healing in our hearts, which is an even greater healing. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and let's uh, uh, bless the offerings. And we have a number of prayers that we're going to pray for because we really have a, we had a mess of a country, don't we? Um, in so many different ways. And yet uh, it's a blessing to be in this country. We just celebrated 246 years, 244 years, right? Of uh, 244 years of the United States of America. And even with all of our flaws, it's still maybe the greatest country on the earth. And we're, we're thankful to God for that. Offering-wise, it's still really tough out there. And uh, there are so many people who are underemployed or unemployed, um, even here with many of the uh, groups that rent our facilities. Um, they're not able to function because people aren't coming out to participate. And so we want to pray for them as well. Lord, we just come to you today and we thank you for your provision of our every need. Lord God, you, you heal not only our, only our bodies, but you provide for our every need. And so we want to lift up uh, the different groups that uh, are partners in kingdom work here at 800 Brook Street and, and just bless each of them. Lord, we pray that you provide for their every need uh, as they work through uh, this time of difficulty. And we pray for all those who are looking for a new job. Lord, we just uh, ask that you would open the windows and doors for that opportunity. Lord, we pray that you would bless the offerings that we give as we give them online uh, and mail them in. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness of our people here. Continue to uh, provide for our every need that FLC can continue to do the kingdom work that you call us to do. And uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also come to you today, Lord, and we just think about this virus that's going on. Lord, we pray that uh, you would give us wisdom to find the solution to it, or that you would even supernaturally come down from heaven and, and, and uh, eradicate it. Whatever your perfect will is, Lord, we entrust all of that issue with you. We also ask that you would uh, uh, work in the heart of our country because we continue to work through this whole issue of racial tensions. And Lord, we just heard a great message from your heart, wisdom from on high about forgiveness. And it's so easy for us to point the finger. Help us that we can each look at our own hearts. Lord, if every person looked at their own heart and examined their own heart, and allowed you to change us. Lord, we would not have these issues. We ask for change where there is prejudice, Lord, that it would be eradicated, that it would be stopped, that it would be addressed. And yet, Lord, there are, are many other issues that are about us, that are about me, where I am the problem. So move in our hearts. Lord Jesus, you came and you died for all of our sins. So bring your healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for uh, Faith Lutheran Church and the transition that we're in. It would seem a very odd time for us to have this transition where we can't even have services and have everybody together. But Lord, you're, you have all things in your hands, so continue to guide us in our leadership with wisdom as we make decisions, as we listen to one another, as we care for one another, and as we prepare for the next chapter. We thank you so much for the history of this church, for Pastor Ken and Liz and their leadership, and for all you've done over the years. Lord, we also look forward to turning the page and to seeing new things happen because, God, you are always making new. Finally, Lord, we lift up our individuals who are struggling. We bless uh, Steve Meisgeier's mother has returned home from the hospital, and we thank you for that. Continue to watch over uh, she and her husband. We pray for Erlene Daniel, who uh, has had respiratory issues. 
We pray for Elaine, who's on dialysis four days a week. We pray for Liz and her poison ivy. We pray for Elizabeth's granddaughter, Quinn, who needs to gain weight. And Lord, uh, bring healing, just as you did with Michael, bring healing to their bodies. And finally, Lord, we remember the Often Brink and Bailey family as uh, their son and grandson, Eli, passed away. He was to be 14 years old one day later. We know that they grieve. Help them to grieve, not as the world does, but in the absolute assurance of the great reunion in heaven for all those who are in Christ. In all of these things we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us also to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we sing our closing song at the cross. Receive the blessing of the Lord. Thank you for joining us, those of you who have been online. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. As you go through this week, lift your head up and know that you are a loved child of God and walk in that grace by the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Have a great week.